everyone and welcome to the micro e-learning program from the Global Parkinson's Genetics Program and the Aligning Science Across Parkinson's. My name is Fulya Akçimen and I am a postdoctoral fellow at the Laboratory of Neurogenetics at the National Institutes of Health. Together with my colleague Samantha Hong, post fellow at the Center for Alzheimer's and Related Dementias, we will focus on mitochondrial analysis from short read sequencing data. We will cover some of the key concepts and two primary approaches to mitochondrial DNA analysis, variant calling and haplogroup analysis, and we will outline some of the major limitations. Mitochondrial DNA is characterized by its circular structure and haploid nature. It spans approximately 16 kilobases and it contains 37 genes that encode for 13 proteins all locking introns, unlike nuclear DNA. Mitochondrial DNA follows a maternal inheritance pattern and demonstrates higher mutation rates than nuclear DNA. Mitochondrial dysfunction was among one of the initial biological processes linked to Parkinson's disease. Furthermore, previous studies have reported an association between certain mitochondrial DNA variants and Parkinson's disease, such as lysine 4 arginine variant in SHLP2 gene. Two common approaches utilized for mitochondrial DNA analysis are variant calling, often, often done with the genome analysis toolkit as known as GATK, MUTEC2 tool, and haplogroup analysis. Several critical aspects of mitochondrial DNA diverge from the assumptions underpinning our nuclear variant calling pipeline. These include their circular structure and the abundance of hundreds of thousands, hundreds to thousands of mit mitochondrial DNA copies in each cell. Therefore, the NOMAD team, in collaboration with the GATK team, developed a new mitochondrial DNA calling pipeline derived from somatic short variant calling. This pipeline was employed to generate the NOMAD version 3 mitochondrial DNA call set. The application of MUTEC2 somatic variant calling is simple and straightforward. Alignment files in CRAM or BAM format and the reference genome in FASTA format are required inputs. We run MUTEC2 on default settings. We specify the mitochondrial mode and chromosome M, also providing a prefix for the output file in VCF format, similar to generating a standard VCF file. Further details regarding specific, specific parameters are available in the link provided below. Although MUTEC2 is a promising new approach, some limitations are worth noting. MUTEC2 mitochondrial mode accepts only a single sample, the output is a single VCF with one genotype field for each sample, it doesn't provide joint calls, and association studies are possible by the imputation of non-mutant alleles as references. Another approach to mitochondrial DNA analysis involves studying haplogroups. A common tool for identifying these groupings in human mitochondrial DNA is haplogrep 3. Because mitochondrial DNA is exclusively transmitted through the mother, mitochondrial DNA haplotypes can be classified into haplogroups based on a phylogenetic tree, where each branch of the tree represents a unique set of variants different from a reference genome. Haplogrep utilizes phylotree, the most up-to-date phylogenetic tree for human mitochondrial genomes, to classify haplogroups. Haplogrep provides a user-friendly web interface for the tool, linked and screenshotted here. Alignment files in FASTA, VCF, or TXT formats are uploaded onto the platform and users have the option to specify a particular phylogenetic tree and distance metric if desired. Haplogrep then conducts a quality control step before calculating the summary statistics for all samples. An annotation step is then performed after haplogroup classification. The web interface includes a summary dashboard with information on each sample and data visualizations. 
Haplogrep can also be run as a command line interface but requires Java. Both the command line tool and web application utilize the same code base. Despite being a powerful tool, Haplogrep has some efficiency limitations when applied to biobank scale data due to memory and compute restraints and can take some time to generate summary statistics for hundreds of thousands of samples. Also, because of its reliance on the phylogenetic tree, its results are highly dependent on the underlying tree. Thank you for your attention and hope you enjoyed the video.